And it was not an effort in college. We certainly had a good uh, law of the press course. It's not all that diff different from what we teach in COM 403 here at Penn State. Uh, but what we have uh, there was no, no uh, formal training uh, in ethics in college uh, in the 50s. That has changed, and I think that even the schools that don't offer standalone courses in ethics as we do, at least integrate uh, ethical issues into their skills course. And so I, I think that it, it, uh, what I learned uh, going in was uh, in a, a very general way what our, our, our mission was, uh, but I had to learn from uh, observation and, and trial and error as to a better way to, to, to try to resolve the ethical issues came along. Now, I think we can today look at uh, a, 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 at least guidelines. There's certainly decisions that had to be made and uh, they're not made for us. But if on the question, for example, is when should a journalist put down his or her notebook and help somebody out, uh, the standard we have is that if you're the best person or the only person to save a life or prevent harm, then you should do it. Uh, obviously, uh, you had to make uh, some extrapolations from that, but we didn't have that sort of guideline then. And, you, and if you're faced with a, an instant decision, uh, it's not likely to be as good as if you had been trained in ethics in a more formal way. Yeah. At what point did you see reporters starting to come in, you know, young reporters just out of school who now had ethics training uh, as students? I don't know that I know which ones did and which one didn't, but I think that uh, the, the education level was continuing to uh, to rise. Uh, that uh, when I went in the business, 50% uh, of the reporters did not have uh, college degrees, and uh, now any survey and say in daily newspapers show that well over 90%, and probably anybody coming in the last 20 years has got, has got a college degree. Uh, it, uh, I, so I, I think the education level has risen, and a lot of them uh, probably did have some ethics training, but I'm not sure that I can say which ones did and which ones didn't. I, I feel good about the people we, at the paper, and I think that irrespective of their educational background, that they, they almost, innate, I would even innately uh, understood the importance of ethics. I say innately, but I, I think that we were innate too, but, but we benefited from what we learned in the last 50 years, and, and we learned from, as we went along, if we, if we made a mistake, uh, I think that one thing I contributed uh, to the dialogue there in the newsroom was, let's figure out why, if we had to do over again, or if a similar situation presented itself in the future, what could we do to have a better outcome? And I think that sort of post-mortems is very helpful and useful. And we would do that uh, whether it happened to us or whether it happened to another newspaper. I th remember uh, Janet Cook's story about Jimmy, the eight-year-old heroin addict, uh, was an unnamed, what I call an unnamed principal or subject of a story. It went even beyond an unnamed uh, source, uh, which we knew enough then that, that uh, the public did not like anonymous sources. We think that there sometimes we've got to give information that anonymous sources uh, can, can only provide. But the misuse of anonymous sources or the abuse or excessive use of it is a problem.